might have been what is happening everybody it's good to see everybody i said i was going to get dressed for the everyday painting on friday night and that's what i'm going to do and for whoever might not like my attire tonight i don't know what to tell you but i won't take this off that's gone and out of respect i was always smart I never wear sunglasses in the house i would usually i would have got hit with something and i, I mean an object probably so the glasses will come off out of respect to our guests and to just learning never wear sunglasses in the house. But I hope everybody appreciates our dress for the occasion. Um, tonight's a very big night. Uh, Jimmy told me to wear a tie and get dressed tonight. So that usually means, they'll tell you what that means. It could be something big coming my way. Hopefully, I think maybe tonight could be the night. I finally get it. But anyway, hello to everybody in the chat. Um, Michael, David, OG Rupi, long time no here. Cinnamon Girl. Duke, my man. Ostara, how are you? Nikki, what's up, Nikki? Sally Boy, what's happening? David T. And we'll just take it from there. Stevie, all right, brother, you're out there. I know you got me too. Dan, how are you? Duke, another shout out. Man. Thank you. Um, and let's do what we do. And um, with no further ado, let's bring in the man. Too sweet to be sour. Hi, Barbara, how are you? Too sweet to be sour. The man of the hour. He never gets. Okay, watch out. I fly in limousine riding, always get fine, profiling my man, Jimmy DeMar. What is happening? Yes, my brother Craig, just so you know, you got to use that mic closer because you sound like you're gurgling, you're drowning in water. <laughs> Am I still boring. drowning? Am I drowning? Uh, no, not right now, no. All right, so I'm going to have to talk a little louder. No, no, we just bring the mic closer to you, I think. It's as close as I can get unless I put it in my lap. Hold on. It's, it sounds as if uh, you're, you're gurgling, you know what I mean? How are we now? How's the sound now? Anybody have a problem with the sound in the chat? How are you, Jimmy? How's the sound now? Well, I can hear you, but again, it's it's not it's not crystal. You know what I mean? I just want you to be on the because I have a lot of things to say tonight. I don't I don't want to mess know, nothing up. No, you do. That's that's a rumor going around, and believe me, <laughs> it's flying around. You know how to fix talk audio. Let's see what the problem is. Okay, Go you sound a little, you sound a little better. Just 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 yes. try to talk close to. Tonight, that's all. That's no, we're at. I had to take um, it shows we're at 100, percent but echo cancellation. Um, I, I'll just put on so okay. I think right, you're okay. Go. All right, I welcome everybody in. Um, yeah, I want to say hello to everybody. Uh, everybody, I want to thank everybody for coming on tonight. And uh, I remembered many more stories I spoke about with with Craig, and uh, I'm ready to I'm ready to rock your world <laughs> because oh, if you ever lived my life, man, you would you would not believe I'm still lucky to be here, man. Still lucky to be here. But um, for anybody that's wondering, it's not scotch and water. I gave that up years ago. I was in the for a little ice tea, and it's not spicy. So. Jim, before we get yes, rolling, sir. before we get rolling, how are you? Good, my brother. Good. How's Catherine? Uh, she's doing well. Um, she told me if I'm not home by ten o'clock, um, I'm really gonna get grumpy. So I, I just hope you're gonna be you're gonna be like the cat at Fred Flintstone's house. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough. Um, <laughs> but I cover up well. I got that old George Foreman. I'm good. So I know how to block them. I got good head movement still. But uh, she's doing well. Everybody's well. And Miss Barbara McKenna, thank you for the 
being here. I'm glad you're here to oversee and hear your husband um, pick on. So thank you for protecting. Thank you. Now, without further ado, tonight, Jim, I feel good about tonight. You know why? Why is that, brother? Because I'm with you. <laughs> okay. That's a good thing. <laughs> it's that simple. Um, just a quick shout out to Timmy Irish, who um, is Timmy, by the way. I keep skipping days. I have you officially um, 75 days and counting. I, I totally went from 82 to 75. So basically, you lost those tickets. Um, so we got your 75 days in your back. That being said, let's get rock and roll in with tonight's show. And um, we don't need to have a safe gym. Let's have a good one because everyone's a good one. And that's not being cocky whenever, you, whenever you're there. Quite honestly, I'm always laughing, so it's hard to control it. Let's roll. I'd like to start off tonight by singing, who's your father, man? I love your hair, though, bro. It's, high, it's still high and tight. All those pictures I had you back in the day, it's still high and tight. Well, that's know? well, that's part of my method. That's part of my image. I got to make sure I live up to my image. I got to be cool. <laughs> and, and and if I don't, if I don't, if you don't look the part, you're not going to be convincing to get that payday. That's uh, absolutely. Got to look the part. And now with so, my gray hair, it's even easier to get paid. Because yeah. I know there's wisdom behind that. I got <laughs> I got to tell you something. And we're going to get right into it. My mother just said to me right now, she said, look at me for a minute. I said, what? She said, the side of your hair, did you dye it whiter? I said, no, my why would I dye my hair whiter? She said, because it got more white than it was there to me. I have no issues with it. Maybe you made it more white. Anyway. Let's get into it. Um, Jimmy, I get a lot yeah. of, I get so many different comments and questions. Everybody knows tonight really is back to what you do and questions and answers, you know, maybe a week, two weeks from now, we'll get back to that. But what I want to throw off with tonight is this. Um, you made a huge payday. You had told me one time. You, what you mean, you emphasized it was you, you. And it had to do with a pharmacist who thought he was a loan shark and he thought he was something. I want to be a loan shark. You told what you said it was, you a half a want to be this shark. Those were your words. I'm glad you brought that up because. This is how you make a payday into a double payday. People don't realize that you got to know how to be an opportunist. This was my 40th birthday. It was September 17th, 1997. I just turned 40 years old. And I get a call from Frankie Vincent. Now, Frankie Vincent was the guy in all the, in the movies with Joe Pesci. He's always plays the uh, the guy with the white hair. He's always he's always with Joe Pesci in a lot of movies. He was Billy Bats in Good Goodfellas. He gets in the trunk of the car. Absolutely. Anyway, Frankie was my friend. So was Joey. So Joey calls me up. I'm sorry, I'm not Joey. I'm sorry. Frankie Vincent calls me up. This is on my birthday, and he says I got this pharmacist. He says he's having a problem. He said this. You know, he wanted he he was putting out money through this kid. I said, and then all of a sudden he was getting payment. He was getting the payments every week. Then all of a sudden it just stopped. I says, I know exactly what happened. <laughs> so I go see the pharmacist, right? So I said, what's going on? I said, I said, uh, I mean, I said, first of all, you took a shot because you're supposed to put this on record. I said, you know, who the, who the F are you? Who, who are you to just do this on your own and by your own admission without being around nobody? You think this is not how it works. So he says, well, I talked to this young kid and he used the kid's name and he said, uh, I gave him the money. The kid was around my age, but he was a little younger and I mean, he might've been like maybe five years younger or so. And 
he's talking to him and he says that the, the kid told him, well, I got a customer that needs 20,000. Another customer needs 10. This guy needs 15. Meanwhile, he paid the three points on each one, which was $3 on every hundred. So on every 10,000, that would be $300 that you would have to pay per week. Just the me, me, meaning that that's just that's just the interest. That doesn't that doesn't mean what it comes off the principal of the original. Let's say the original thirty thousand. So, just to give you an idea of what the kind of money was here. So I told the guy. I says, "Look, I said, just so you know, I said I can get this money. I said, but you're you're going to have to be claimed by us now. So I I told him. I said, you'll you'll be around us. I said. Meanwhile, I didn't even tell him who it was yet because. He's that dumb. This guy was stupid, you know? So he tells me the kid's name. I do some research on who the kid is. So now I reach, meanwhile, I tell the pharmacist, I say, what you have to do is you got to go, you got to give me 10,000 now. <laughs> so what is that? What is all that? Uh, I hear there's, there's, there's somebody else on here. Well, all of a sudden you got an echo. No, there's, there's somebody else on camera. Somebody else was on camera, buddy. <laughs> what the heck is going on? I don't know. It was somebody else. Somebody else in the corner. Now there's two of you and there's one of me. Yeah, right. Right. Now, okay, we're, we're okay now. Go ahead. Anyway, I tell the guy, I said, look, I need 10000 to get started with. Don't worry. I said, that'll come off of the back end when I grab this kid and I get all the money that you gave him. He must have gave this kid over 200000 this is how mm -hmm. stupid he was. That's big money. So now I also reach out for the kid. Now, this is how people lie to you. I told the kid, I says, well, are you around somebody? You got to tell me. I said, because this way I don't step on nobody else's toes. And you're, you're this way you're doing. Because because this pharmacist has claimed, you know, said he's with the old man. I says, you can't, you know. Meanwhile, I told the guy, I said, this is what you just were just going to say. So you're covered. I said, we got to say that you did that. And then the old man went, went away. So you were like, he was just trapped in between the cracks. The guy, he was, he just happened to be left all alone because the old man went away. So he gives me the 10,000 that day. That time, I had a nice birthday. Of course, I went to spark steakhouse at the time, went out and spent a ton of money. The next week I wind up getting like another five, another seven, another 10, another 14, all different various stories that I needed to get that. I, thus telling him that this is going to come off the top. It's going to get him off the top once I collect the money. So I see this kid. Again, he tells me he's around a certain guy. I says, okay. He says, well, I'm around Muzzy. I says, you're around Muzzy? I says, so I go down neck in Nork. I go see Muzzy. Muzzy says, no, nah, this kid just collect. He collected money for us. He says, but he's not around me. I don't know who he's around. He said, okay, that's number one. Then I go to the kid again. I says, you lied to me. He said, no, well, actually, I'm really around this guy. He says another name. So I got to go check it out. He lied again. Now I'm, I'm getting, I'm fuming now, right? So now he tells me a third name, lies again. So now I'm figuring, well, then he's with nobody, right, Craig? So, I'm figuring out nobody, right? Trying, so what I did, so now what I did was I figured, well, if he's got the money in the house, I'm going to grab the money at his house. I grab two of my friends and I grab this locksmith that I know. We go right to his front door. The locksmith goes in there, picks the lock, goes right in, opens the front door, opens the front door of his apartment, goes in. Uh, the kid dealt him with a lot of weed. You, he said they could smell the skunk weed in there, but it was all inside of, of uh, like igloo coolers, but the weed was all gone. He already had sold it, but there was no money there. Anyway, there was a couple of pistols which we grabbed. Grab so, no, we grabbed the pistol, but there was no money to grab. So now the next day, there's a guy calls me up. This guy, Charlie, calls me up. I'm not going to use his last name. I don't know if he's dead or not. Anyway, he says to me, uh, Jimmy, yeah, I know. Yeah, you're Juicy's kid, right? He says, yeah. He says, listen, that kid, you know, he's around. He's around. I'm going to say the guy's name now because the guy turned out to be, he went bad. He was supposed to be a boss with the, with the, with the uh, Zip crew, with the, the Cavalcantes, but he turned bad. It was Anthony Rotunda. He said, no, he's really with Anthony Rotunda. 
He says, but uh, but this guy's a real hoodlum. He's around him. This kid's around him for years. I said, why did he tell me he was around three different people? He lied to me three different times. I said, why? Because let me tell you, see, when he told me around that he went around a guy's soft shoes, a guy's soft shoes that I knew, I went down to uh, Budweiser to go see the guy. And I said, I said, is he around? I said, is he around this other guy, Joey Rotunda? He says, I don't know, no, no, Joey Rotunda. But meanwhile, they were with the same crew, but he was just protecting his captain. He was just saying that. But anyway, when the guy Charlie told me he was around him, so I had to take it a face. He says, oh, Jimmy, he says, just be in a holding pattern. Just be in a holding pattern right now. He says, don't do nothing. He said, because this guy's... So what I do, I get a whole little Sammy at the time. The little Sammy is the guy who proposed me. I said, Sammy, we're going to make the claim that he was around, around, around my dad. I says, but then you're going to say, you're going to say that it's you. So I told little Sammy, I said, being that my dad's not here anymore, he was away. My father never knew nothing about it because he was away. So, I, so little Sammy was supposed to take care of it. So little Sammy, he goes down and he winds up having to sit down with these other people. And let me tell you some how things are, how people are shrewd. In this life, you might get the right story, then you get a lie. And here's how you get lies. Because at the time, I wasn't straightened out. They knew that they could get this payday, and they got the kid that had the money. Yeah, they grabbed me to 200000 I was supposed to go back to the pharmacist, but it never went there. They said, no, we couldn't get nothing. No, you came too late with the claim. He really wasn't around, around pops and everything. I, I says, really? Meanwhile, I know what happened. The money was collected. Meanwhile, because I wasn't in status at the time, I wasn't, I wasn't special, I didn't get the payday. But this is how things go wrong. And I only mention the, 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 the bad guy's in because he went bad. He's a, I turned out to be a stool pigeon. The guy returned. So, I, so stool pigeons are on their own. I'll do whatever the fuck I want to do as far yeah. as that goes. There you go. Let them have it. But Let anyway... But anyway, but anyway, I I made the payday off the pharmacist from the get go. That was the name of the game because I wound up taking it out. But then little Sammy wound up giving me forty thousand because little Sammy must have made about two hundred thousand from the kid, and he only threw me forty. So I got the forty from the kid, and I got about a hundred and a hundred and sixty five thousand off the pharmacist. So that was a very good, uh, very good fortieth birthday present. In the makings, when I kept going, it was a, it was a very good month. The yeah, month of September, nineteen ninety seven. Yeah. Um, can you repeat that number again for me? It was about one hundred sixty five thousand I got from the pharmacist, and I got forty thousand from Little Sammy. So I got a two hundred and five thousand. But that ain't nothing because a school teacher I tell you about, I made over two hundred thousand with him. And so and I'm, used, but I'm used to big I was used to big numbers when I did when I did everything for the union, I made a ton of money. They love that's why they loved me. That's why when I seized that power, they made me stay right where I was because I know how to take the money down. God, man, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a goddamn money machine. You ain't gonna tell nobody is more hungry and nobody my partner used to tell me he used to call me slick. He used to say one thing about that slick. He'll always find a reason why these contractors have to pay us. They always have to pay us. You're goddamn right I find a reason why, because I don't get up in the morning unless I'm making at least a thousand dollars so I can go to lunch. <laughs> That's right. You gotta go to work. Right. They don't you know, I mean, everything, you. everything I did was around restaurants, was restaurants, was 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 lunchtime, dinner. Then, then going out at night, I'd be in New York six nights a week for this Absolutely. for seven years. I was like that. I Absolutely. wish I had all the money I spent now, man. I tell you, yeah. I wish I had it all now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't have big scores like that, but there was a period of time where I had money coming in with you know through the different companies that I had known terrible money. Pissed it away as quick as I made, as quick as it went out. Uh, yeah, no. but Craig, talk, talk into the mic again because you're gurgling again. Talk closer, put the mic to your it's right on. 
It's right on. Can you hear me now? Sounds said, a little better. Maybe maybe it's too loud or something. I don't know. How's that? Anyway, yeah, a little so better. Discipline is important. You make scores like that because you never know what could happen. Shoebox, some of it. I've seen too many guys, as I'm sure you have, make big moves, big scores, and a week later they're getting pinched and they recover that and it's gone. Where if it lets it gets put away somewhere, they don't recover it. Well, yeah, well what what happens what happens is you wind up saving money, but then your lawyer grabs it. You wind up giving it to your lawyer in the long run because there's yeah. always a charge. You always it always has to come down to you gotta pay the check. You always uh -huh. gotta pay the check. And then you have to get a bill. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Thanks. 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 What, what else? What else did you want to tell me? <laughs> um. Well, it's never tell. I want to ask. Um. You always talk about. It makes me wonder because you spoke. You speak a lot about him, and it makes me think that. Well, two things. You. You could have had an opportunity, probably, to wind up, even though your dad was set in place, and that's where you were 99.9 going to be. But if your dad, if, you know, if it worked, but if your dad wasn't who he was, with the Gambino, you probably would have had a home with Johnny Moose and that crew, because you mentioned Johnny Moose a lot. You said so many stories about Johnny Moose, but no one knew. I don't think you've told us everything. I think you got more. Do you have any more for me? <laughs> so, well, I, 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 have, I, have, I want to know. I, I have, I have funny stories about Johnny Moose. Where, let me tell you something. This guy, I'm telling you, he's he belongs a Damon Runyon character, and and he looks the part from a mile away like i said he could be on a on the witness stand anybody in the world would look at his face and would say that he's guilty that guy's guilty but but like i said one night i'm gonna tell you one night we're picking up envelopes that that he used to get from restaurants they used to give him protection money so he used to be with uh, right the right hand man of johnny de Giulio. johnny de Giulio, who wound up dead years later and he was found in a barrel in, inside of uh inside of the ocean somewhere anyway johnny the Giulio was the genovese boss of the new jersey faction of the genovese family he was the jersey boss johnny moose was his right hand man so anything we did we had to always clear it with johnny johnny the Giulio, and ultimately he, johnny moose would always say and this guy you're gonna see this guy he, he would never say his name but that means the chin you know that's what he would always say so <laughs> We're in this place. It was called the bottom of the barrel. I, I think it was in somewhere in Jersey. I think it was like in Jersey City or Union Township or Union City or something like that. And uh, we he goes in to get the envelope. So it, there were, upstairs was like a small disco floor with the colored lights and it had a large bar downstairs where you had this like area where you would eat. It was like these booths. You would sit down and have something to eat. Anyway, but downstairs, it was a chain there saying the bottom section was closed. So Johnny Moose says, uh, Jimmy, you want to go downstairs? <laughs> we'll go downstairs. You'll be with Johnny Moose, and you go, you're go. you going to go eat, and uh, we'll just have them open the uh, restaurant for us. So I says, all right, let, let's go down. So we're going out. We're eating. He's waiting for the guy, to, the, the lady, to give him the all of a sudden, this 19-year-old girl comes bopping down the steps, right? She's like real, like ditzy, like, you know, she's looking and she goes, ooh, she goes, ooh, I'm, I'm infatuated. Now, looking at his face and looking at me, I said, she's got to be talking about me. No, she was talking about him. She was talking about Johnny Moose. So he's going, oh, really? You, you, you like the Moose? You like Johnny Moose? It, even, that's yeah, what he would talk about himself. He, he would talk about himself in the third person. Third he would say, there. all right. So, so, all right, so sit down, honey. Sit down in the book. You want something to eat? He says, all right. Uh, and she goes, I know you guys are guineas, aren't you? You are guineas. Aren't you? He goes, uh, honey, don't use that word. I don't like that word, guineas. We're Jewish. We're Jewish men, honey. He says, don't use that word. 
He says, do you want something to eat? She says, no, I don't want nothing to eat. He goes, well, you know what? Why don't we go to the Alibaba on First Avenue, Manhattan? We'll go listen to some jazz, some live jazz. We'll have a nice time tonight. I said, okay. So she goes, okay. So I'm driving. She's in the middle of the front seat. Johnny Moose is on the passenger side. There's the three of us. So we're driving. She's still talking to him about that guinea. She says, I, I know you, you're a guinea, right? He goes, hey. I told you, honey, I'm not a guinea. I don't like that word. I'm Jewish. I'm a Jewish man, and I'm very sensitive to that. So, so I'm like, I'm just absorbing all this. We go to the Alibaba. She goes in. We have a few drinks. She goes to the ladies' room. She she readjusts her makeup. She comes out. She puts her arm around Johnny Moose's neck, mine around mine, and she goes. Tuh, tuh. And she kisses both of us on the cheek, and she was feeling the mood, you know? So he whispers, he goes, real hard. He always tapped me hard. He goes, uh, Jimmy, what you're going to do is take my Cadillac, bring me to the 10th Avenue on the Best Western Hotel, take me there with this broad, he says, and then pick me up tomorrow afternoon around 3 o'clock when I'm done with her. All right? I says, okay, John. So we leave, and we're going to set on 10th Avenue in Manhattan to the Best Western Skyline Hotel, it's called. So when we go in the bottom, the bottom of the place, the where the gate opens, where it lifts up for you to go in to park the car, it says "Welcome to the Best Western Skyline." Anyway, the girl wakes up because she fell asleep on Johnny Moose's shoulder. When she wakes up, she goes, "What? What's this hotel?" She says, "What? What? What, what are you doing?" She says, "You giddy, no good bastard." She says, "You think you're gonna up me? You, you no good gimme? You think you're really gonna?" me so johnny moose says hey enough with this he says he goes jimmy drive this girl back to cliffside park and drop her off he goes i'm tired of this get her out of here so i'm backing up or we're leaving and she's still in his face she goes just just yeah she's just so again you giddy mother mother effort she just thought you were gonna uh, me just 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 you know she says you giddy back he goes he starts screaming he goes hey enough with this fucking guinea shit she goes fuck you he goes fuck me boom he punches her sucker suckers her right in the face <laughs> now with that she grabs a rear view mirror off the car she breaks it off clunks me in the head with it while i'm driving and then she's hitting the horn she's going rape rape so now johnny moose starts strangling her and her legs are hitting me they're poking me in the, in the face because he's strangling her he she's down on the floorboard in the passenger side and he's going like this he says jimmy because we got to go down the 12th avenue where the water is we got to get rid of this body he says because of johnny the julio or oh, and he and he lets go of the, of the grip on ch choking her he goes oh if this guy fight and he, he returns to choking her oh, if this guy here finds out we're in trouble we got to get rid of this body I says, oh, God. I said, here we go. I said, John, look, this is just throw her out of the car. I, I just felt bad for her, you know? <laughs> so we were, we wound up in Harlem somewhere. We just kept driving. So he, I stopped the car. He goes, get out. He throws her out. I says, wait, here's her pocketbook. He goes, get out. He goes, he goes, take off. I said, but her legs are under the car. He goes, I don't care about her legs. Run her legs over. <laughs> <laughs> now these are my friends. Yeah, this is that's yeah. Johnny Moose. <laughs> this Johnny Moose guy. Um, I mean, you told a lot of great things. You've been in shootouts with him. Um, he's oh, he's man. Like, um, a piece of work. I have something I just want to say to you that comes from um, you know we we have nothing but love for our whole community, whether. The, you know, they join the chat, watch, whatever. Some people, you know, just, you know, don't like it. You know, maybe introvert or whatever. But this comes from a gentleman that I have a ton of respect for um, personally. And he, I want to read this to you. He said, this is for you, Joe. A man is judged by his action and not by what he says or he's going to do. Jimmy's actions speak for his character 100%. And I just wanted you to know. Very nice. Very nice. Whoever wrote that, 
That's a very from, nice compliment, and I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. That's coming from a man. Well, that's the kind of crowd you have. They have a lot of class, Craig. Thank you, and thank you to everybody in the chat. That's a fact. Um, I mean, they're here every Friday night for you, but we're all, you know, we try to keep this community special and you being here people that way and everybody respects each other in the chat. We can't tell you how many people speak to each other, know each other's stuff, email, people correspond with each other. Uh, like I said the other night, I, Roy from, you know, Ireland. Um, speak, I mean, amazing. Anyway, that was hysterical. Um, I didn't really get to try not to watch one once. Uh, I, I can picture it. I'll picture it. And the way he, 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 hey, Craig, Craig, he used to say, like, we're in the after hour club, right? So I'm, I was running three of his after hour clubs. I used to, I used to run, I used to control them. I used to set it up, get the tickets, because you never could have money on the bar. You would have to let men only would have to pay. They pay ten dollars, they get three tickets. And they, each ticket will represent a drink, let's say. So even when we had the, the, the lights around the bar, he actually stole the electricity from the next door, the Japanese guy who had the cleaners. He drilled a hole in the wall and, and, and made a makeshift uh, uh, electrical uh, extension cord just to steal the electricity for the lights to go around the bar. He wouldn't even pay for that. So uh, let's say people want people wanted to leave if they were done drinking let, or let's say they didn't want to leave they're feeling into it but he wants to close the joint now it's like six o'clock eight o'clock in the morning he says all right uh, jimmy he goes well tell these people that uh, uh, it's it's time to go you know they have to go now and uh, i said all right all right everybody let's go Pat, uh, please, hey, wait, yeah. hold on, jimmy. he goes hold on he goes wait a minute this guy let him finish his beer i i says well, i says oh okay i said no, i'm sorry sir then not even one minute later, he goes, oh, Jimmy, what is this fucking circus? Get rid of this guy. Tell him we got to go. <laughs> I have a, another quote statement made by uh, um, every Listen, I have nothing but good things to say about anybody that's in this chat. Um, but this gentleman, um, Mr. Duke Lopez, I talked about him a lot. And I know he's not comfortable with, you know, I'm not going to get into it. He's maybe someday you know, he'll talk about it, but he wants you to know this. Craig, Craig, you you're, 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 about, Craig, you're bubbling. You're bubbly. You're bubbly. I can't hear you well. Tell me if you hear Sorry. that. Can you hear that? Yes. All right. Duke says, Jimmy, the story with Johnny moves when I gather after the punch. <laughs> that sounds right. like some shit me and my Marine brothers would do because Duke served our country multiple oh, times. Yeah. Right. In, 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 I, guarantee you, I guarantee you they did that in Okinawa. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I don't know. I, I I'm not a, you know, I don't really know um, too much, but I know too. Yeah, it, it's like that in Okinawa, or, or at the Blue Fox in Tijuana, Mexico, where where the main event would be a horse would come on the stage and go with some uh, some terrible young lady who would uh, please. They got some crazy shows. When you're in the, when you're in the service, you'll you'll notice it. You'll notice it. it's it happens. But in Okinawa, Jimmy, you, yes. No, I was going to say something because a lot of things, a lot of the stories that had to do with Johnny, one, they're funny. They're hysterical. So he must have been, like, if you were close to him, like you were, he must have been, a, like, the way he still, you do, you know, you speak like, you do his voice, his personality. He must have been funny back to number one. Number two, Sounds like he had a little bit of a violent streak in him. Like you might need okay. to have it. Oh, just a just a just a little. Just a little. Yeah, that's all. Just a little bit. 
Um, and I get a lot of stuff like that. So when you um, explain how, I would love to know how bad was the face if he, if he hit her that hard, did it explode? <laughs> oh, you had to see him, please. He's, I mean, like, you know, like he just, he's just from another world. Like, you know, he's from another time. He's, yeah, he's, yeah. he's like a Neanderthal, you know, lived in, he should be in a cage, you know, in a cave somewhere. All right. Oh, that's good. That's good. I, I'll let you, you know, listen, I got something else for you. Um, oh, good night, bro. Good night, my brother. You got it. You Thank you for coming in. We know it's uh, probably, what, 3, 4 a.m. in Ireland. Thank you for staying up with me and with us. Thank you. We appreciate you, Lord. Thank you, my brother. Like everybody else in here. Um, thank you. Um, Jimmy, before we... Um, say good evening tonight whatever um is it true that there was a war it had something to do with the juice man which is your dad drew mr vincent juicy demonica and i don't know the facts behind that did they make a special war between to your father do the something maybe do it Yes. Yeah, let, let me let me tell you about it. In 1960, 1963, after right. fighting for like five years, 1958, my father gets locked up for robbing an, an A&P store with, a, with a, a few other friends of his. And it was an armed robbery. Anyway, so he had to go away for that. I think he got six years and then somebody squealed on him when he was in there he got he had to wind up doing nine years on him but while he was there henceforth that was in 58 1958 1963 he finally got a chance to make the new jersey new jersey supreme court now see back then do you know are you familiar with the the, the way the grand jury works grand juries they, whenever whenever you get indicted they only hear one side of of the the uh, aggregate aggravating factors of whatever you did wrong they never hear that's anything true. that's positive or mitigating factors which is in your favor they One only hear the bad stuff so they can indict you yep. to therefore charge you and then bring you to court for a trial that's what happens in a grand jury now yep. back then back then you weren't allowed you weren't allowed to find out what happened in the grand jury minutes what took place who testified against you what the witnesses who they were now because wow. a lot of times when you finally go to trial and if somebody had said something different during the grand jury they could say well they didn't they did let's say they didn't identify my father or something they identified somebody else you were not allowed to know whatever happened in the grand jury. It was kept secret until State versus Demotica, 1963, New Jersey Supreme Court. My father changed the law. Then you were allowed to find out what happened in the grand jury minutes to know this way you know right from the beginning who's against you, what discovery, what, what information they have against you, how to go about planning a defense for it, this is how it happened back then. Because of him, a lot of guys won their case because there's always a discrepancy usually between the grand jury and your actual real trial when somebody testifies, testifies what they say. You can go back and say, wait a minute, there's a controversy. You said this back in the grand jury and now you're telling us this. Wow. Then it, it pokes holes in their credibility, which shows that they might not be telling the truth. So huh. not, my father, my father is not only the law breaker, he's the law maker. <laughs> That's the juice man. <laughs> I got to tell you, I do all the rest of that shit. You the same over the best one. Not only was my father the law breaker, he was a law maker. So I'm going to have to add that into the repertoire. So that's a lot for me to remember. <laughs> just just talk close. Talk close into the mic for me. That's all. I said, 
I got to remember that your father was the law breaker and the law maker. So when I do my whole big flair for you, I got to add that in. But it's a yeah, lot. You got to add that in. <laughs> that's a great one. Wow. But that's crazy. my brother. My brother, I'm going to let you go and uh, say goodnight to my buddies. My, my friend, uh, Jimmy Irish and uh, Cinnamon yeah. Girl, all the people that always stay on there, the True Blue Tex, everybody. And Dex, I think it was Dex, right? Yeah, Dex. Nick, Dex Nick, is, Nick is the one that made that statement. Right. Nick. So I want to just acknowledge everybody that always is very loyal listener and loyal watcher. And it's time, time for me to just chow down a little bit because it's been a long day. And I, oh, Craig, I love you. I love you, love and I'll, I will see you next week. And yeah. everybody, take care. Love you all. You got it, brother. You all love you. Good morning. Okay. Good night. Well, another night with Jimmy Squid the Monica. Take the glasses off. No more time. I said I'm breaking balls. I'll wear it on the ground. What's happening, everybody? I hope everybody's good. I hope everybody enjoyed um, tonight. Uh, how's everybody doing? Uh, I hope you all have a good weekend. I'm happy uh, my Yankees came back and beat the Blue Jays. Um, that person knows who I'm talking to. Um, and I care about him, but, you know, we all knew what that happened. He knew it. And he was bragging to me two days. Yeah, uh, Blue Jays were beating my hands and all of this. And then they blew it. Really, too? I don't know what it is because I don't understand. Guys, now, is it still on the way? I don't know what the frick it is. I have no idea. Let me know if it's still bad on the water. Mute it.
on. Now you can hear me. How is it now? Can you hear me at all? Doki, we will. Doki, speak so. Thank you for coming in. Again, we've been having a problem with StreamYard. If you can hear me, yeah, I can tell it sounds messed up. I did it. Was it all messed up all night? Was it? But the, the sound was there all night. It's it's terrible. I don't get it. Can you guys see me? No sound. Again. Wow. Sorry to hear that. Anyway, you can hear what I'm saying now. Stream yard has been having issues. I got an email from them this morning saying they're sorry about uh, all the issues they've been having. And uh, they, they're trying to work on the issues they have and whatnot. And I, you know, it does us no good when we're in the middle of the show. And yeah, <laughs> Jimmy was talking the most. Yeah, but still, we shouldn't have a sound issue. And again, StreamYard has been having issues, and I'm not the only one. Um, long story short, everything I check shows the sound is on. So it, it tells me it's it's got to be an issue coming on their end. And like I said, I've already got an email that they're working on some issues that they're having. But worst comes to worst, I'll, um, I'll I'll move on from StreamYard. There's about two or three others we can use, and still get it to YouTube or wherever we go with it. But anyway, I apologize. I have no control over this shit. I hope you enjoyed the show, um, and you guys have a great weekend. Be well. Be safe. Um, I have my granddaughter's birthday tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to uh, being with the family and whatnot. And um, Bobby, we got the draft coming up. I know uh, you guys see him. I uh, try to put real quick mock drafts every time, all seven rounds. And again, it's done with a simulator. So it's not like, you know, it'll be next week. We'll be making hits in front of um, everybody. Before it happens, Sally, have a great weekend. Everybody, be well. Have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Thank you all for coming in. Every last one. And.